Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Automation Alley's virtual tech takeover hosted this morning by TM Group. My name is Allison Trumbull, and I am the Technology Relationship Manager here at Automation Alley. If you're not familiar, we are Michigan's Industry 4.0 Knowledge Center and a World Economic Forum Advanced Manufacturing Hub, or AM Hub. Here, we obsess over disruptive technologies like blockchain, 3D printing, and AI. Our goal is to take these really big, complex concepts and make them easier for companies and individuals to understand and start to implement today. So we work with a wide range of companies from those that are grasping the technologies and those of thought leaders and innovators in Industry 4.0. We really want companies to start thinking in a software-first mindset and be able to digitize their whole company. We do this by hosting a plethora of events and obtaining content from every aspect of Industry 4.0, academia and, we, and industry, and we really want to give businesses a competitive edge to help them along the digital transformation journey. So, like I said, we do this through a plethora of events, such as this webinar today. We also have a few coming up. In January, we have our Global Economic Outlook that's gonna be at the Townsend in Birmingham in person. And that will feature international business experts who will explore the shifting dynamics of the global economy and how companies can best position themselves to take advantage of the opportunities and rise to the challenges of doing business around the world in 2022. As well, we do have our Integrate or Industry 4.0 conference that is going to be May 10th, 2022 in person as well as live streamed. And that's going to be in Novi at Suburban Showcase. So if any companies or anyone is interested in speaking, presenting, exhibiting at either of those events, please reach out to me or go to our website. As well, if you are a Michigan manufacturer, please reach out because courtesy of the MEDC, you do get one free ticket to our Integrate Conference. Now on to our presenting company this morning, however. The TM Group provides more than three decades of deep product knowledge with Microsoft Dynamics CRM and ERP business solutions. Working with the best add-ons and ISV solution providers as well, these solutions are more are used more than millions worldwide and by hundreds of their clients in Michigan and across the US. Today, we're really gonna be learning how to leverage new cutting technology, specifically the Microsoft HoloLens Visor, which enables using augmented reality applications for remote services and education purposes. We'll explore how the HoloLens capabilities and applications, including utilizing Microsoft Dynamics 365 field service and Microsoft Dynamics 360 guides. So we're joined this morning by Marcel Chabot, software development lead from the TM Group. He is a lifelong technology enthusiast with over 20 years experience creating software solutions for a vast array of industries. For the past 14 years, Marcel has been working at the TM Group where he leads a team of talented software engineers and developing, maintaining, and supporting customer solutions, which include ground up development and has enhancements and in extensions of supporting applications, integrations, and reporting. So don't forget, this will be recorded. Feel free to share it. And if you have any questions throughout the presentation at all, we do have a Q&A box at the bottom. So feel free to type in your questions. We will be pausing halfway through to answer any live, as well as at the end of this presentation. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us this morning. And Marcel, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Allison. Let me hop right in to get us started talking about these exciting technologies. As Allison pointed out, this is going to be a remote support and training through mixed reality. We're going to talk about the HoloLens and a lot of really interesting and exciting technologies in that space. Quick agenda for what we're going to do today. We're going to go through a quick introduction. We're going to talk about what is XR, which is the everything is cooler if it starts with an X for different types of reality integrations. We'll talk about Dynamics 365 and what that means as we use that phrase throughout our, our products and discussions. We'll talk about what the HoloLens is. 
We're going to then go into guides. We'll talk about field service. We'll talk about some future technology. Depending on how fast I go, we may be able to get into Microsoft Mesh, which if you're watching Ignite uh, yesterday, uh, there were some neat announcements on those products. So that's that's how up to date uh, my presentation is. I had to make changes last night because Microsoft added more features. My name is Marcel Chabot. I work at the TM Group. I've uh, been designing and writing software for my whole career. Currently, I do a lot of stuff in the Dynamics 365 space, utilizing .NET, Azure, the Power Platform. And as a company, the TM Group has a lot of consultants. I lead a team of developers that help them deliver the stuff that doesn't come out of the box. I have 12 years experience in test and automation before going into business software. Um, test and automation is where I rip trailer hitches off of pickup trucks and tell you how hard it was and test washing machines and brew beer and do rocket engines. So industry wise, I've been involved in a lot of different uh, industries out there through test and measurement. And for the past 14 years, I've been supporting them from a business software standpoint. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I do a lot in the maker community. That's uh, groups that get together to build weird stuff. Uh, we meet at maker spaces, which are like gyms for nerds. Um, and I uh, work with robotics and microcontrollers. I have yet to attach any lasers to sharks, but I have to have goals in life. So when we talk about XR, we're talking about three different technologies that stack up to build this reality uh, augmenting world. And the first one is virtual reality. And we, we've all seen uh, this technology is the headset that goes on and you're in a totally immersive world. You go through the wardrobe and there you are in Narnia. The experiences are completely directed and managed by the world inside the headset the external inputs into the user are very limited uh, this results in what we call the vr to er change because while the digital world is completely isolated your shins are not and the coffee table is still right where you left it and this creates a lot of uh fun experiences but a lot of challenges I don't know if anyone has seen the game Beat Saber. It's uh, when you put on the headset, you have a lightsaber in each hand and you have blocks coming at you and you're smashing them and there's explosions and there's music and you, you, you're you an amazing warrior with lightsabers. And on the outside, in the real world, you look like you're fighting off a swarm of invisible bees. And if anybody happens to walk by, they're getting beaten with, VR controllers. So this is this technology is great for an immersive experience separate from the reality that we all live in, uh, and sometimes to its detriment. Another XR technology is augmented reality. This adds a layer um, on top of the world, but through a uh, a handheld or, or a small device. Everyone's favorite is Pokemon Go. It, it was huge years ago. It's still huge now if you ask my kids. And this is a way to take what is happening in the world and create an overlay through a view to interact with that world. It is typically a singular uh, um user experience though you can get lots of people doing the experience together it's interaction and feedback is through that hardware device so you're going to interact uh with the digital world on a device overlaid over the real world and we'll see this with uh some remote support applications we'll get to um and, and it's a, a great way to add to the world. 
feedback is typically limited to what's inside the device and coming through the device. The last XR technology is mixed reality. Uh, this can also be looked at as hands-free augmented reality. One of the main differences is that you're interacting with both the real world items that are in the, the space in front of you, as well as the virtual items that are in the space. And you're using them interchangeably as though they were real items. So in AR, you play with the items on the screen as they are an overlay. In mixed reality, in MR, you're working with the items interchangeably with their real world counterpart. And that'll become much more clear as we go through using the HoloLens and uh, looking at how that technology uh, actually works. The, the nice thing that um, the, the mixed reality also brings is that these virtual worlds can be shared. And you can interact with other people in the space as they interact with the virtual elements in your space. It's a really uh, exciting way these things are going and, and how these, these devices work. What is the HoloLens? The, the HoloLens is a, is a heads up, a head mounted heads up display. And the really exciting part or the, the secret behind them are the see-through um, lenses, the, the waveguides they're called. And the challenge is putting a display right up against your face that you can both see and read and see through and interact with is a challenge. Uh, there, there's a whole lot of stuff with light polarization and angular views and ray scattering that all needs to be solved so that you can have an experience that mixes both what you see through the lens with what is in the lens. The other thing the HoloLens does is what's called inside out position tracking. The HoloLens can know where it is in 3D space by looking at the room the same way you do. You can look at the room and you can tell you're moving because the room is not. And the HoloLens does it the same way. You don't need to set positionary markers or anchors into the room so that it knows where it is in reference to stationary objects. It figures it out on its own. That with spatial audio, it has eye tracking, hand tracking, network connection, voice recognition, and this 6DOF IMU, that means uh, degrees of freedom. It knows where your head is tipped and how you're looking at the world so that it can adjust the, the holograms accordingly. All of this results in each eye getting its own 60 frames per second view of the world to create a stereoscopic 3D image that overlays uh, the world you're in. And if you're wondering how, how that, that 3D scan of the world looks, this is my office. That little sphere is where I was sitting when I, when I captured this view of my office. Um, you can see the, the TV screen or the, the monitor that I, I'm sitting at is, is they're over here. I got a couch, I got some cabinets and a TV, and, and right there in the corner, oh, there's my cat. He's sleeping in a box because he's so helpful. It's constantly updating and generating this view of the space that it's in so that holograms have a thing to interact with. And it, it gets pretty detailed um, as it scans. If I pivot it around, you could actually see out the window um, as it scanned past my window into the space outside. And, and as people come in, they get added uh, to this model. It's a, it's a pretty interesting detailed view of, of the world that the HoloLens gets to see. We're going to talk about Microsoft Dynamics 365. That's their umbrella over 
uh, their business software. You have Office 365, which is the umbrella product by which all Office products go. That's where your Word, your Excel, PowerPoint, email products, they all go under Office 365. When you talk business software, we're doing Dynamics 365. This is your customer relationship management, your field service, uh, business central ERP, <clears throat> F&O, um, finance and operations, um, which used to be called AX. Um, all, all of these business suites, your power platform, your dataverse. The business suites all live under Dynamics 365. So as we use that, that term, we're actually talking about a lot of products, not just one or two tool sets or a specific named product. It is an overarching uh, branch uh, of products. And the, the first product we're gonna talk about is Dynamics 36 Guides. Guides gives you a way to use augmented reality or mixed reality to create an interactive user experience. This is taking a workflow um, or work instruction and turning it into step-by-steps supported by holographic data and uh, an interactive user model that, that your users can work with on their own. And it can be um, deployed either in uh, an educational setting or can be packaged and used anywhere. It doesn't require um, specific user setup. And we'll see how the HoloLens handles the random environments that it could be in as this technology gets applied. And one of the important pieces that makes the Dynamics umbrella useful in this AR, VR, mixed reality world is that it's backed by things like advanced reporting and usage statistics, uh, data workflows, and analysis around the data from the guide's users. It's not restricted to just a single instance where the user performs a training and is done. There's analytics and reporting on how that training went, how the user experienced it, a lot of that gets wrapped up in here to, to give you a, a business usable experience. So the demo I have for you is gonna go through a non-traditional educational opportunity. I've got uh, one of our partners has loaned me a kit for a, uh, a, a pediatric surgical implant. And uh, we built a training around that piece and uh, i will show you the guide and the guide setup and the training to build this but it's a really technical skill it's very hard to explain and visualize just through um, a pdf or a, a video explanation it requires equipment that most people don't have so it's needs that tactile piece to be able to get through it and visual visual prompts at each step are critical to being able to successfully perform this task which makes it great for something where you can holographically describe something and show the user what they're expected to do guides are created as steps the steps can be sequential so step one, two, three, four, like, like normal things do, but you can also branch. So if you have a question or a sub-step or a, a process where a decision needs to be made, you can actually prompt the user for questions and branch in, in simple go-to type structures to other steps within your guide. Um, this allows the users to make choices if this was a debugging and testing guide as opposed to a training guide, you can ask the user for symptoms of a system they're trying to debug and based on their answer, drive them to different processes to review. You can include additional artifacts like YouTube videos, Microsoft Stream videos. You can include 
um, PDFs and Word docs and other things as artifacts to this, that as the user works through the guide, these things become available. All of the data, all of the models, all the holograms, they're all stored in Microsoft's Dataverse, which is a standardized data system that they have. CRM sits on it. Uh, the Power Platform is very much engaged in um, the, the, the data verse. And so let me bring up a guide. All guides start with an anchor. The anchor tells the HoloLens where it is in space in reference to everything else you're going to do. It does need to know if it's going to place a hologram two inches to the left of your workspace, where is your workspace? This demo, I used one of the more challenging positioning pieces, which is to have the user place a hologram in 3D space, marking where their workspace is. And this allows me to, to put this anywhere without a reference piece. If this was a standard piece of machinery that I wanted somebody to be able to do HoloLens references for, I can put a QR code on that piece in a known position. And anytime the HoloLens sees that QR code, it would know where it is anchored in space. Next, you create your workflow as these strings of steps. And you can have each step as a text body and the ability to add 3D components to it. You can also ask the user questions. In this case, I ask user whether they want to do a review, whether they want to practice a procedure, whether they want to package a training kit to return it, because um, um, uh, they're, they're usually loaned out. And then you have the technique and in each of these, you can include 3D parts. These are um, 3D parts from the actual procedure that are the uh, CAD drawings. And they were, I, I imported them in so that they could be used in the guide and positioned in 3D space. And here we can see we can add images, videos, there's um, stock toolkit actions such as buttons and uh, spaces you can identify where a user's hands are uh, during the course of the guide. And you can send them to web, web links or you can bring Power Apps, another Microsoft technology, into the guide. And once you're through going through setting up the guide in um, the guide software, you've set up to go into 3D space and to align these 3D parts to their, their test counterpart. Next, we're gonna take a look at um, the way this actually gets implemented. And um, we're gonna go hands-on and we're gonna look through the guide, through the HoloLens at uh, setting up a guide. Now, a little forewarning, most people, including myself, are not used to making a video from a camera mounted in the middle of their forehead. So the framing on my videos is, is not amazing. I'm gonna apologize up front because it's it's much harder than I, uh, than I anticipated it would be. Uh, it, it includes a lot of looking down, which you don't do when you're narrating. You wanna look up a little bit and the camera doesn't swivel with my eyes. So if I'm looking at something, uh, the camera may not have seen what I was looking at. I, I, I did what I could to edit it into the, the good parts. Um, also, people's heads bobble along a whole lot more than uh, we think they do. So if you're on a really big monitor or in a big screen, um, there, it could induce a little motion sickness because people's heads bobble along and it, it does have some image stabilization in it, but I bobble way too much. 
So I don't want to ruin anyone's morning. So feel free to glance off to the side at something that doesn't bobble uh, as they speak. All right, we're going to do a little work from inside the lens here. And here we go into the guides. First off, I'm going to bring up the menu. And we're going to bring in uh, Microsoft Guides. So will take a second to start up. We're going to load it in to uh, my test instance. This is using gaze, so it's clicking where I look right now because it's keeping my hands free to do other things, which there's nothing right now, but in a moment. We're going to work on setting up the uh, this orthopediatric pedia plate training. I'm going to go in as an author. Now, the first step in working with any holographic training is we need to make sure that we've aligned what we're going to be training on with the real world. And if you have a fixed piece, then you can do that with a, um, with a QR code. Or, or another type of marker but in this case i've got this vice here and a bone fake bone that i'm going to use for this training so i want to uh, align it to the real world so that i'm just using a pinch gesture to move things so that i can work with this in this vice and i can set this up anywhere on my table and still be able to use it so i'm going to uh, position this in this vice here. Kind of want it here, like I think. Good. Move that because I was not paying attention or was in my way. So then I can take this piece and place it here. And I'm actually going to turn down the the contrast on my display to have it super bright. I want to be able to see the bone through it so I can pick this up I can position it however I like and then give it a little rotation because this will be my reference it does take a little practice and this is uh, the more difficult method uh, but the one that allows the most freedom for uh, positioning and working. Once I think I have that close to right, oh, I don't like where that is. A little finicky there, but so now I can look around it in 3D space. I want that back a little further. There we go. I'm not too worried about this end. I'm going to be working on this end. And I'll let my hologram get behind my table. Let me bring this back up where I want it up here. There we go. And I am happy with it. Okay. So now again, using a pinching gesture, I can move things around. And uh, I'm going to want to go to one of the training tasks that I haven't finished yet. And I'm just gesturing my way through. I want to look at the practicing procedure process. And in this case, I'm going to adjust my positioning a little bit. Um, I'm going to position holograms in 3D space. I got a couple of these done already. For me to be able to do a PDA play procedure. That one. 
That's good. That one's the other one. Direct measure. Okay, I know where I am now. I'm gonna go back a step. Using check measure device to identify the appropriate scrolling. So that's where I left off with that being there. And then I'm going to want to do my drilling. And so for that, I don't actually want this piece anymore. So I'm going to take a holographic piece out. And I will move it over here. And I will delete it from the model. And I'm going to grab the the drill icon. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add my own. I'm going to go under generic tools. I'm going to grab the generic drill because I don't have a 3D drill model for this particular procedure. So I'm going to grab my 3D drill model and I'm going to place it uh, here. And indicate what I want it to do. And if we don't like the size, that can all be adjusted. Oh, that's more drill than I need. Let's get smaller. Like that. And I can indicate that we are going to drill a hair. And then we can go check out our next step. And the way I keep everything aligned is I've copy the I, once once you set up a step i've copied over the previous step and then insert the screw so now i've got a 3d model of the cannulated screw that we need for this and there it is I'm certainly not doing this on easy mode because having having models fit on models is one of the more challenging things to do. But here is our model. Now I'm going to adjust it. indicate how I want the person doing this procedure to use it. The nice thing about this is it gives a bit of an x-ray view for this, this particular type of task. I'm happy with that. And then I'll proceed to go the rest of the through the rest of the process this way. Oh, I, I, I could go through and adjust all the, the, the wire alignments and such to make this even clearer and work through all of the models. But this is the process of setting these up. And then um, when the user goes to operate, they'll have a similar view of everything. 
And if you need to, you can hide the models to get a better view of what you're doing. You bring the models back to take a look, move anchors out of your way, and design your training um, to, to best fit the, the process that you're doing. And in this case, uh, this is a surgical training. So that's how you set up a guide. And I could have edited that a little shorter to remove some of the mistakes I was making, but working in 3D space is such a unique experience that it takes a bit of practice and, and a, a, a bit of finesse, I guess, as you work with things that look like they're there. But when you go to grab them, they're not. And it allows you to interact with things that are behind things that you can see. And it's a really unique um, experience. Now, from the mixed video recording, the holograms are darker and they tend to appear as though they're on top of um, my work surface or on top of my hands as I reach in. And through the lens, they're a little bit more ethereal. So you can see through them quite a bit easier. Not that they're wispy and ghost-like, but uh, there's contrast control. So you can adjust how dark they are and how much of your vision they occlude. And um, in 3D space, because of the depth changes, you it, it looks like your hands can go on top of or behind the, the holograms. When they go to 2D space, like we see in the um, in the recordings, it's it's more uh, one dimensional, and and things look a lot flatter. Next up, we're actually going to run through that that training inside the lens because there's some unique uh, educational experiences that you can have that happen only from inside the lens out. So let's hop in and take a look at how that goes. We're back in the HoloLens where I'm going to perform the surgery training that we created earlier. To do that, I'm going to start guides. I conveniently place this hologram right over my workspace here so that everything I do is you know, kind of right here. I've set up my workspace the way I expect the training to be set up. And we're going to connect to our instance. And we're going to select our guide. I get an option to be an operator and an author that most users won't get, but we're going to be an operator. And the first step is to align our hologram our work surface as best we can. I'm turning down the brightness so I can see through it. That looks pretty good. Not to worry about this end um, for this demo. And, and then in reality, the, the bone was a neat idea, but having used it, I may make a different choice next time as far as my, my holographic selector here. I'm going to confirm that that's good. Okay, here's the first instruction on the slide. Uh, if I need to decide that I need to change where that anchor is, I can go up to that anchor option there and change that. And we're going to go through the orthopedic the orthopediatric technique for the pedia plate. Uh, it wants it to the left, but I am left handed, so I put it to the right to, to give me a little bit more freedom. And this could have been a question that guides the user to which side they place it on. Now I come to a branch in the logic. I can review the tray contents, I can practice the procedure, or I could package the kit for return. I'm gonna practice the procedure. 
And so now I, I am greeted with the first step. So I need to place the guide wire into the center of the distal femoral. I'm, I'm not going to butcher these words. And I'm going to go over into my kit. If anybody is squeamish about bone procedures, real or, or uh, simulated, um, we can look away, um, especially with an amateur doing it. The this guide should be paired with others, a general familiarity with the tool set, with the uh, procedures, with how to load this thing. All of those should be a part of the plane. So I'm going to use the hologram to guide me. And then once I'm happy where it is, I can tap this. It doesn't see me trying to tap. I can turn the hologram off so it's not in my way. Turn it back on so I can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm a little off from where I want to be. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my working area to match my natural here. In the real world, this would be harder to do. But I'm an example here. So now I can see that I have placed my piece where I want it. I can turn it off and I can inspect. I can turn it back on and see that I'm happy with that placement. And then I can look back up at the guide and go to the next step. Select the associate, uh, an appropriately sized PD plate and slide it over the guide wire down to the bone. And now I can see what it's gonna expect me to do my wire still lines up with where I was working, and there's the plate. So I'm going to come over to my tray. I'm going to remove a PDA plate. And I'm going to slide it over the wire all the way down. And in the recording, this may be completely obscured. In, in real life, the holograms are quite different in that they're more slightly more transparent but i can see that i have really good alignment between the pieces and i can turn off the holograms and see that i'm happy with how that is working i can turn them back on and all of this is using gestures so my hands are free to continue to work so now i look up at my instructions and then it wants me to use a centering drill guide for the next wire and if I look down this is what that looks like and I can come over here to find my centering guide that matches and that 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 makes sense and then I need a wire so I retrieve a wire and then I'm going to turn off the holograms so I can clearly see what I'm doing, having used them for reference and setup. And go in and go. And then I can turn on the holograms again. And I moved my, my piece. So I'm going to adjust again to line everybody back up. Because that, that was more my bad than anything else. And uh, reference wise, that makes sense. I'm not exactly on the holograms, but the nice thing about this is that you have the flexibility to reference and work through depending on how, how you're doing on the job. So now I can look up and I'll go to the next step, which says to do it to the other side. So I'll grab another wire and the drill, which I'm woefully underqualified to use, being a code monkey and whatnot. And I'm going to align. 
Then I'm going to turn the holograms off. They are in my way. I've probably done something wrong here, and that those are not going to line up quite right. We will work with it, because I am not a surgeon, <laughs> and, and and this is the extent of my training. This is a lot of fun, though. Uh, we'll go to the next step. Use the direct measuring tool. This guy here to identify the appropriate length of the screw. That slides over. I'm going to read it from the top. And if the holograms are in my way, I can turn them off. The nice thing is the waveguide glasses on these don't really block my vision. Though I could flip up the visor if I needed to, but then everyone would just see the ceiling. Now, checking for screw length is academic, as the kit only comes with two. Drilling over the guide and pre-drill for the insertion of the screw. So I'm going to switch this for the drill. It wants me to do a drill over. And again, I have the idea. So I'm going to turn the holograms off. This extra drum mode. Well, the drum mode is much faster. And if I don't like where the guide is sitting, I can pinch and move it to where I want it to be. Go next step. Insert the screw. So now I can see that I'm going to insert the screw over that. And screw it in. So over the guide wire. This goes over the guide wire. But do not tighten completely. And now I'll go to the next one. Okay, we've already direct measured and nothing's changed. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip a step. And we're gonna drill over the next wire. I understand visually what I'm going to do, so I'm going to turn off the holograms. I'm going to drill over this wire. Like so. I go to the next one, and I'm going to do the screw over guide again. The nice thing about this particular type is that it gives you a bit of x-ray vision on what the ex expectation is. So from the user standpoint, the way this has been positioned, I can actually see through, it looks to me as though I'm looking through the bone and getting a visual of what is expected uh, for the outcome without having to go to fluoroscopy or anything. And it's a neat way in, in this particular case to see things that are invisible. And since it's in 3D space, it really looks like it's inside the bone. If this was an engine, I could 
be having an overlay that lets me see inside at a part that I need to look for. over the wire again. And I'm not going to tighten all the way because that's what the instruction says. Prior to final tightening, we move the guide wires. And then do final tightening by alternating between. So I'm going to switch this tool out. And then I'm going to remove the guide wires. And then turn off the hologram so I can see what I'm doing. And we're going to do the final tightening. Nothing successful. I've completely, I have successfully completed this guide. And by the looks of it, I indeed have. My boss, having watched that, has come to the conclusion that he has no fear of me leaving software and becoming a surgeon. Uh, there was a bunch of edits in there because at one point I knocked the jig right off my desk. Yeah, not, not going to be a surgeon. But what we could see there is how me, a software engineer who has no idea how this stuff works, is able to run through a rather complicated procedure step by step, guided by 3D prompts and alignment tools in 3D space through the HoloLens. Um, this can be used in, in multiple different applications, automotive, industrial, wherever you want to provide visual cues in 3D space, this works really well. And the nice thing about the HoloLens is it actually comes in form factors that are hard hat, hazardous material, um, even medically um, prepared. So it, it can go into spaces that um, that, that it's needed. Now, when a, when a training is done, um, you need to get feedback from it. And one of the, the methods for that is uh, reporting that is built into guides. In this case, uh, Power BI reporting. Here I have one of the reports that comes out where computer issue right before this meeting, because that's when you have computer issues. This shows me how many people, since it's only me, this one, how many training sessions were run through, what each step was, how long each step took. We can take a look at the PDA plate, and we can go through and see uh, which techniques were run and how long they took. I have one here for setting up a 3D printer, how long each step took to go through. And with this information, you can decide that, hey, I thought this step would take a minute, but it's taking our users five minutes to get through the step. Is it unclear? Does it require being split into two steps? Did we include too much information? Um, is this a point where people are taking a break because the, the previous steps were too long? You can analyze the effectiveness of your guide usage and your implementation through these, uh, these steps here and through the reporting provided. And, and you can look at the, the roles, how, who, who was working on them, did they finish all the steps? Are people abandoning your training before it's complete? And then adjust and tune as you go. Um, bringing this fully around, it's not just a training tool. It has improvement and improvement process loops built in to the technology. Uh, there's another stock, and these are just the stock dashboards 
of who's using what, how often. So if these are out in the field and you're providing self-service training, what self-service training is being addressed? Because this goes into dynamics, uh, these reports can be adjusted to track who's doing what trainings, who's completed what trainings, and how long did it take each individual person to complete those trainings. So it's very exciting technology in that space. Um, also, if you're using it for repairs and guided service steps, you can look at what's being used for guided service and adjust your service team service training, preventative maintenance training, all that around uh, what your, your field service and, and guide usage is for, for those pieces. What skills do you need to be able to build out guides? You need good work instruction development. A bad work instruction will result in a bad guide. You, your guide is not a replacement for quality training. You also need 3D asset management. Just having the CAD files, not quite enough. You need to be able to have a team member that's able to adjust the fidelity of those models. Um, the, the cannulated screw in the demo I was working on was over detailed. And you can see that as uh, a little fuzziness in how the hologram looks because there's too many faces, too many, too many detailed components in there that aren't needed in the view I was using them in. And also, the, the last piece is you're deploying new hardware and a little bit more complicated than company issued cellular phones. It requires updates and maintenance as it goes along like any computing device does. This wraps up the guides portion. I'm gonna hop into remote service in a moment. Does anybody have any questions about Dynamics 365 guides? I don't see anything showing up in the open questions. So how long did it take to create that? The initial guide, learning how to do it and lay out everything, took uh, three hours to create the first guide. One of the tricks I learned while doing it is that it's best to create your most complicated model first. So the point in the guide where I had the plate down and the three wires sticking out, that's the first model to create. And then copy that step multiple times and then delete the pieces you don't need in all the other steps around it. Because what happens is that you'd have to place each piece in every frame of the, the guide, and, and that takes a lot of time. Once I, once I figured out that I could copy a step and it copies the model and, and all the 3D components with it, it got a lot easier because then it's subtractive each time. Um, running through the guide, it depends how long the guide is. And uh, if I was doing it again, There'd be some things that I'd simplify. Uh, aligning a full bone with another full bone was overly complicated. Um, talking to some, some people that do this, they recommended the unicorn ball approach for something like this, where it's simply a sphere with spikes pointing out of it that you align to what you want the user to align it to. So you would place the ball where I wanted the fur and the, the, the line to be where I want the first pin to be. And once they align that, everything else would model off of that. So that, that would have been an easier way to start. Any other questions? Awesome. Remote support is a uh, remote assist is another Dynamics 365 product. This sits on top of 
D365 Field Service, which is another Power Platform based tool to help manage your uh, field service and support needs. And the, the great thing about that is that you can tie assets, you can tie service level agreements, you can tie all sorts of things together with this remote support experience. It works with the phone in your pocket. So I'm gonna demo this without the HoloLens. Uh, the experience is almost identical, except you've got uh, two hands free in the HoloLens version. Um, in this one, I will be holding my phone to do it. And it works with Microsoft Teams. And when, when I say with Teams, I don't mean a special version of Teams for holographic work. If I call anybody on this meeting who happens to have Teams installed, they will get the 3D interactive interface that I have. They, it's it's a, a sneaky sub-deploy that's already built in to everybody's Teams right now, which is really a neat way for Microsoft to deploy really cool technology and not tell anybody that if I've got a remote service license on my user and on my phone, then anybody I call can remote support me through Teams. It's, uh, it's super cool. Now, I did not want to do any Microsoft marketing videos in, in this. Um, but one of the challenges I ran into with Microsoft remote support is that it is resource intensive. It takes more resources than the guides do because it is doing a two person 3D experience where one person is only on a PC. They don't have uh, the 3D processing. So all the 3D work for two people are done in the device and every attempt at recording it resulted in what best can be described as potato quality video. It was awful and unwatchable. And um, in talking to the people that know, the way they record this is they use a second HoloLens and a 4K camera, and they wire the two together with a PC running software to do the overlay of the holograms so that you can see them in the recording. Uh, to record through my phone or through the lens, uh, the phone, the video quality was awful, and the lens just stops recording when remote service kicks in, or remote assist kicks in, because there's just not enough horsepower for it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a Microsoft uh, a video real quick, and then I will do it right through the phone so everybody can see how that works, and and, and we can um, do some live demo with that. What if there was a way for employees to work together from anywhere when everything is on the line? Employees are the heart of every business. It's their resourcefulness, ingenuity, and drive that get the job done. But even the best employees need help from people who aren't there with them. Now employees on site can work side by side with experts in remote locations. In an instant, they can share what they see lend a helping hand, walk through the process step by step, helping solve problems in real time. This is a new vision for work. Now employees can work smarter and bring in the people they need with just a tap they can troubleshoot, repair, and perform with confidence and speed. They can move freely, pull critical information into view, and stay focused on the task, their hands free to do the work. This is collaborative problem solving at full speed. Your people 
united across time and distance, more connected, more informed, and more efficient. Now employees can work together from anywhere. They can go there without being there. This isn't the future. This is here and now. All right, let's uh, let's do a demo. I, I've always been told don't take overly complicated demos and do them live. Um, so let's uh, let's take an overly complicated demo and uh, and do it live. Here is it's going to be a little bit laggy. Uh, I have I have an assistant here holding a phone. And uh, and looking through uh, that uh, countdown timer there was des designed for a uh, uh, a demo that I was doing based upon a scene from Lethal Weapon Two, um, mainly so that I could have something that my my boss could question on my expense reports. Uh, would you look down at the sphere of mysteries? So if if we're looking at um, these things, I can actually pause. And then on my screen, I can point at things. Now, in uh, Dottie's view, in 3D space, I just dropped that arrow. Uh, when you move around to the side, that arrow is positioned in her 3D space. So as she moves, that arrow stays more or less fixed in space. And if I want to, I can draw and say, hey, I need you to look over here or uh, check out uh, this crazy thing going on down here. If I hit stop editing, she now has that view in 3D space. And um, she's able to work around and move around all these objects and I can give her instructions and uh, assistive things in, in space. Hope she's got a question. And I can, I can interact. And this simple point, click, draw interaction in 3D space is super powerful when you're in a supportive state. With the HoloLens on, we get the same functions of point, click, draw except both hands are free. And, and with this, I could call anybody and these tools show up on their screen. Your Teams installed on your computer has its ability to interact in 3D space with somebody calling from Remote Assist, which I think is the coolest, coolest sneaky thing Microsoft has done recently is roll out this product without really telling everybody. Do we have any, we're kind of blasting right through a uh, remote assist um, because really it, it's, it's coolness comes from this simple interaction that the two of us can share an experience of, of just basic point and clickiness. Point, click, direct is, is one of the most phenomenal things you can do with a user. Um, we see this being deployed in places where um, experts, you have, you have a, uh, a funnel effect. You have uh, a series of experts that are in-house. You have technicians that are out and about, or if you're Canadian, out and about. Um, we're going to stop sharing because this is this is totally eating up my my network. Thank you for your assistance. When when the call was hung up, the the user was prompted if they wanted to um, log this into field service, 
and that will take this data and add it to the field service log. And um, you can continue your support case from there. And this interaction between field service and remote assist really helps out with um, that end-to-end -end support experience. But being able to send out a technician with a HoloLens and to be able to pull together the brain trust over Teams really lowers your cost of support. Uh, we have customers that during the install phase <clears throat> of their systems, a HoloLens is put into a Pelican case, closed up, you put it into kiosk mode, it's called, which allows them to use only applications that you've uh, you've, you've set up, which in this case would be remote support. If they need help, they put on the helmet, remote support pops up, there's a button for help, they push help, it calls into the main office, they do their point click draw support session. You can push documents, you can push additional videos, you can push more data to that end user, provide the support, take the HoloLens off, put it back in its box, and it goes off to the next project during deployment. It's um, in the end the, the headset costs money, but the ability to provide rapid support, less downtime, and less travel uh, ends up in in these clients' use cases saving a lot of money. Without using the helmet, just providing remote assist licenses to your field techs where they can use the phone in their pocket saves a lot. You don't have to provide specialized hardware um, and, and off they go. Do, do we have any, um, the, the through the lens demo looks exactly the same and I had planned on doing two, but visually outside of the fact you get to see two hands reaching up and placing arrows and drawing lines, it is functionally the same. Um, so I, I was going to save the network bandwidth and, and skip this one. Do we have any questions about remote support? Are you able to add arrows during the live remote? The um, the phone user and the Holland user can add video uh, can add arrows um, live while the the camera or uh, the device is moving on the team's side. Uh, when you want to add an arrow, it does a, a pause of the video um, so you can place your arrow because you can't control what the other person is looking. So you may want them to look at something and you hit to draw the arrow and then they look away and that makes it very difficult. So it pauses the video while you apply the arrow. What's really cool is that as it paused the video, it also paused and um, held the 3D metrics data for that frame. So while they may be looking around the corner with their camera, um, you're actually still working in 3D space at where they were when you pushed the button and, um, and, and can work in that space and can draw your notes and your arrows and everything. And when, they, when, when it unpauses, you can tell them, no, 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 go back and look at you know, the, the retro encabulator there. Uh, I need you to look at this. And they can see the arrow. Uh, I, I hope that answered your question. Anything else I can answer on the the way through? Um, I only have till till ten, and I got one more cool technology to add in. Um, so the end user, you were showing the video. Add any annotations? Um, no, the the end user. Um, the person with the phone or the HoloLens. Um, well, as, as I was I was doing the demo, there were two colors showing up there. I had the gold and there was blue showing up. The blue was actually coming from the phone user back to me. 
So the person holding the phone can also do point and draw. So uh, my my assistant there was was pointing at things with the phone, and you tap a button, and and that will will place an arrow where you're looking. They can point and say, "Hey, what is this over here?" And they can draw circles on the phone. In the Hololens, I can point and click and place arrows, or I can point and draw, and, and use those same interfaces to ask questions. And the person on the other side can use the same to ask questions and provide data. So both sides have point and draw functionality in 3D space. And, and it's great because I can point and go, hey, is this where the problem is? Is this burned out? Hey, this door is locked and I can't open the cabinet. Where are the keys? I can use the, the point and draw on the, the, the question side, on the phone and HoloLens side, and the team's side supporting that person can point and draw. It's symmetrical with both the technologies and the 3D space. Uh, I hope that answered. All right. The, the last piece of technology I'd like to show off is called Mesh. Mesh is in preview and is one of the new emergent technologies in this space. It is not in the dynamics set. It is a more uh, creative, it's a collaborative, it's an educational space. And this one is multi-user shared, where guides is a single person experience. Um, remote support is a one AR, VR, uh, one AR, MR, uh, augmented reality, mixed reality user, and one or more Teams users, so so somebody in 2D space uh, and, and supporting 3D space, Mesh is a shared augmented reality space for multiple people to, to function in. And, and I, I'm going to show it as one person. Really, really, I, I do have friends. Just, they just don't have HoloLens, and they, they weren't up to play. Uh, late last night when I was pulling this piece in because um, Microsoft has announced that this technology is being integrated into Teams now where you can have people in an AR experience on their phones, a mixed reality experience in the HoloLens, and a 2D experience in Teams all collaborating together over a 3D space. And it is super cool. And they were talking about it yesterday. And I wanted to share a bit of that technology with you today. Um, the holograms that you see, uh, as I mentioned before, the way they flatten into the 2D image that is presented in the video versus the 3D image uh, that I get to see in the HoloLens doesn't quite do them justice but they are really cool nonetheless. He, here is uh, Microsoft this is the Mesh, preview of Microsoft uh, Mesh running in my uh, cluttered and crazy office. So Mesh is expanding into a whole bunch of different product lines. We have Mesh, which is right now purely a AR experience. But the next releases of Mesh are going to include PC, as well as uh, an integration with Microsoft Teams, letting you work through multiple products together. Here is a table I was working at earlier. What I've set up here is a collaborative space. If I had other HoloLens wearing friends, then we would all be in this shared space here. And I can, I can move this little control panel off to the side. I can adjust where this table is, move it around, adjust it. What I've done is I've loaded the models from my guide demo in here. And if you would imagine this space is a place where multiple people were discussing 
maybe the benefits of changing a tool or uh, how you can actually see through this screw. I didn't know what a cannulated screw was. This is what it is. And you can decide that, hey, let's take a closer look at how this works mechanically. You can resize, you can discuss, you can lay out. And it's a table, and these are all models that I've pulled in from the real world uh, CAD files. And, uh, and and it lets me work with them and adjust and tinker and conceptualize in a 3D space. It's very, very minority report, sci-fi. And that back down to normal size. Well, it's a little large, but we can take a look at it. We can interact multiple pieces together. And we can add more models to this. I can hit content. Um, you know what? I'm going to grab a bugbear. Because, you know, what demo is not made better with a bugbear? And uh, you know what we're missing is a... Uh, a PDA plate. So what I'll do is I will upload a new model. Now I have saved this model into the headset so that I can whoop, not mean to grab the moon. Uh, I'll put that up there where it belongs. This device I'll grab 3D objects. This particular system likes uh, GLB files. And when working with them, you need to consider how much space they're gonna take, how many um, sides and such, so that um, you can have something that, that makes sense and functions quickly and easily in the space. So now I can take a look at how a cannulated screw sits within a PDA plate. And if I had other people that were smarter than me, which there are lots of, they could then take a look at this model, come around the back, look at how it sits. We could actually have a discussion about a particular product. And when you're talking about things, it helps to have tools. So I can come and I can draw so there's a, a draw pointer there, and I can draw in 3D space, and I can come around that, and you can actually look at the back of, uh, of what I'm drawing, and I can change my colors. It's, it's really very intuitive and a lot of fun to be able to look at things and, and work with them in a way that is, isn't something that you get to do very often, which is, you know, <laughs> doodle in space and uh since it's it's hand and gesture aware uh, i just flip up a hand and now i got a different different tool Oop, i'm still on pencil i want to switch to eraser and i can erase the things i don't want i can um there's sticky notes and other other ways you can play, you can add more rooms. This is currently my one home room that I have. And you can step back and it's very, very stable in space. And to be a walk around, whoop, I had a spare bug there. I'll delete him, don't want him. I'll go back to manipulation mode. There we go. My tools go anywhere I go. Now I'm back into manipulation mode. And I can I can work in in the space. And from a collaborative standpoint, this is something that nothing else can do. If somebody was in a different area, a different city, a different time zone, uh, we're still on one planet. But if they were on the moon, we could participate together. And where I'm standing, they would see an avatar of me. So 
my relative space to the table is visible to the other people that are participating and they can interact with me knowing where I am and where I am looking. And it's a very exciting tool to have in a collaborative space. And I hope you're excited as it, about it as I am. And come here, I'll bring up my menu. So that was working with mesh which is a, a, a emergent technology that they're working on now. The preview is amazing and is a lot of fun. I know in the video it looked like I was manipulating things by reaching under the table. From my perspective inside the visor, everything is happening on top of the table. I am grabbing things and bringing them up and changing their position in 3D space. Um, that, that overlay of the table that looks like it's uh, I'm, I'm playing under it. That's not the perception of the person wearing the headset. That's just what happens when you take and you flatten uh, imaginary things in 3D space and, and try to re-overlay them into a, a, a 2D view. Um, with the other recording technologies that Microsoft uses to be able to come around and see things from different angles, that all uh, doesn't, doesn't appear that way. Uh, any questions about Microsoft Mesh? Any questions in general? I'm going to jump on here. Unfortunately, we do have a hard stop at 10, so it only gives about two minutes. So if anybody does have questions, please reach out to Automation Alley. We can get all your questions to Marcel. I mean, you had some great demos, and I think there will be a lot of questions, um, especially with so many different products and the mesh being pretty new. It was very interactive. So anybody has any questions, please reach out to us. Remember, this was recorded, so it'll be on our website if you want to watch it again or share it with any friends, customers. Like I said, there was a lot of really neat demos um, and a lot of opportunities. So be sure to watch this again. And if there are anything else you want to know, please reach out. Um, as well, we do have another tech takeover next week, November 10th with Phoenix Contact where we're gonna be diving into four simple steps to build your digital factory. So thank you so much, Marcel. We really enjoyed your demos this morning. And like I said, if anyone has questions, please let me know. All right, thank you. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.